back. Uh, here we are, uh, April 8th, and I'm going to cover, um, I guess, what I'm getting a fair amount of emails about, and that is uh, people want a greater understanding. People that uh, about a month ago had a different concept about how stable the economy was where they were, uh, particularly just going out to Americans because our European subscribers knew it was in the tank a while ago. But um, a lot of, uh, you know, folks have been reaching out. And again, we're a small group. I'm not saying we're reaching millions of people. Hardly not. Not really. Don't even have a desire for that. But um, they're asking, like, well, geez, you know, I was working. Of course, I understand the lockdown, whatever. Everyone has their, their view on that. It's a shame that it's, it's being so misrepresented. But in any event, uh, they've been reaching out. And they're going, well, how did all this happen in under a month? Like, yeah, whether if there are people working that reached out to me for someone else, like, yeah, okay, jobs are jobs. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And But I always thought the economy was okay. Uh, some of those folks dabble in the market a bit, and the Dow and stuff like that. Sure, there's always opportunity, but the Dow is going up. So if everyone believes the Dow is going up, the economy's good. Now, that's, you know, Keynesian economics, I guess, but... That's, that's your choice, but uh, no, you can make money in a bad economy. Um, so they want to know really how this thing crumpled like a cookie in three weeks. And now there's programs that are running out of money. People are just falling by the wayside. Their violence is picking up. I guess in the last couple, in the last month, it's up 22 percent in New York. I don't know if I agree with that, but I, we did mention that was coming. It's nothing yet, though. Nothing, 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 nothing. We haven't hit nothing yet. And uh, they want a greater understanding. Okay, well, we're going to delve back into that. Uh, it is going to involve me uh, over the next couple of videos because there's no way I'm going to be able to do this on one video. Uh, we're going to delve back into a little bit of history. We have to uh, to uh, discover the pathway that led us to where we are now. Because if we don't, uh, it's uh, uh, it serves uh, the next sentence serves as to why so many of us keep repeating the same mistakes. And I'm only going to go back to uh, the uh, beginning of World War II with Britain uh, from uh, 40, uh, 1941 to 1945. Then I'm going to catapult us into the into the present although uh, my research buddies uh, us guys the mentors uh, we've covered this in depth over the greater part of uh, decades being together I'm just reminiscing about how long we've been dealing with this and studying it it's it, God you ever feel like you're getting old? Anyway, I don't want to get off track here, but uh, in any event, uh, we've traced it back to Sumer, okay? Uh, past Mesopotamia, Sumer, and uh, the Sumerian culture. Uh, timeline would be more or less around 6,000 years ago. If you start reconstructing the onion from a time like that, you start to see where everything starts falling into place uh, it's much simpler to understand the workings of a two-gear transmission rather than a six-speed transmission like we have today. Technology was much simpler. So if you go to a great, a very good starting point where a lot of today's understandings, be it religion, be it science, be it astrology, start to fall into place, I'd suggest, like I have many times to subscribers, start at the Sumerian culture, but that's where we did. Anyway, uh, the research group, the mentors, okay? And um, it does make sense, a lot of it, an awful lot of it does that way. So to better understand uh, where we are now, I'm going to bring you back to World War II, uh, Britain, and uh, we're going to pick it up from there, okay? so. Let me go in and grab some notes and grab a coffee so I can sip along uh, while I'm briefly describing this. And um, let's take it from there, okay? So I'll catch up with you in a couple minutes. Hey guys, I'm back with you. I just needed to pick up some notes here. But to better understand where the greater majority of at least uh, the folks that uh, subscribe with us are finding themselves, you need to go back and revisit the subject of debt. Um, 
I'm going to commence only from World War II. Now, now our group, uh, the mentors, that we're a research group, and we just enjoy doing this. Again, I apologize for the chickens, but we do uh, have several of them, and we get a lot of organic eggs, and we grow fruits a little bit, vegetables, and uh, things like that. So uh, you'll have to forgive us for the noise. We live in the country. But uh, it's, a, it's a good place to be about right now. Anyway, uh, back on the subject of debt. Uh, it was in World War II uh, where Britain, um, they found themselves fighting several different powers from di uh, several different directions. Of course, we all know Germany and that, but there was a lot of other uh, little frictions that also, and it, it, it really took a toll on Britain's economy. I'm going back around 1941, World War II. So what happened was Britain started borrowing money. Now, they first started borrowing from their own citizens on future taxation, okay? So, bear in mind, that's, that should give you a clue, uh, people, citizens of, of the UK and Britain, about uh, that. They also borrowed from my home country, Canada, but the bulk of it came, as with most other countries, the bulk of it did come from the United States. Uh, by the time 1945 rolled around, they were already peaking at that time. They were peaking somewhere around, uh, at the time, about $10 billion. Now, $10 billion in that time was an awful lot of money. It still is today. But back in 1945, we did a, you can also do a, you know, if you want, what would, uh, let's say, a dollar or something uh, that cost you a dollar in 1945, what would it cost you in 2020? There are calculators for that. We looked it up just to give you a better idea. So what $10 billion would have uh, amounted to today would be seven. Um, excuse me, 100, excuse me, 143 billion 710 million dollars today. Now that's, that's a substantial, uh, that's a substantial debt. Of course it's a pittance compared to the realistic 20 trillion plus dollar debt we have now, but in any event. Okay, moving along as we go through this, um, I want to raise, it raises a question now, uh, after with all these programs and everything, and uh, they won't work though, you can't, you can't artificially stimulate an economy like that, um, but in any event, um, maybe I'll discuss why it won't work later, but not now. Anyway, um, I got a question for y'all watching this, who do you think is going to be paying for all these programs? Who do you think is going to be footing the bill for all these programs once everything uh, starts adding up? and? You know, you can expect your tax bills to be soaring through the damn roof. I can tell you that right now. Mm. Bear with me while I look through my notes here for one second. Those who were, and remember, I've defined it more than once, ignorant. Those who are ignorant enough, I didn't insult anybody. Those who are ignorant enough to allow a cashless society to come into play, which is what's highly being talked about now. Of course, they're using the virus of money, germs, paper. Anyone who will allow one of the last freedoms you have left of a cashless society deserves what happens to them. When they have total jurisdiction on what you pay, how you do it, you will have no means not to be able to do it in a cashless society. You have no privacy in terms of purchase. You have no privacy in terms of payment. You have nothing. Anybody that ignorant to allow something like that, as I repeat, deserves what they get. Within a decade, already, not my words, go to the government websites. I'm only going to quote America right now, not Canada. Uh, as of, I believe it was 2029 or 2030, the U.S. social security system is flat and broke. Now, they always underestimate the bad and overestimate what they think is good. One day I'm going to show you about, again, how to twist, you know, statistics again in another video, but 
it's uh, it, it it's not for this time. Um, but I'm I'm letting you know I I don't think it will quite be a decade. Okay, so. Um, Again, folks, you decide what what is what you think is right for you. Again, I'm, I will never tell you what to do. But um, looking at the notes again here, I'm going to just come out and say my personal feeling. Okay, they're great, and I love young people. And a lot of friends we have are, you know, half my age, maybe in their forties. Uh, so you know, two thirds my age. We have a lot of younger friends, and. Uh, I don't know, they kind of say the way Leanne and I live, we're really young at heart. Well, that may be, and maybe some of them are a bit more mature, but, you know, I, I feel sorry. Leanne and I do. We feel sorry for the young people of today. Um, if I was a young person in my 20s or early 30s, mid-30s today, uh, uh, my God, I feel sorry for them. Uh, they will never know the privacy that we had. They will never able be able to experience the same kind of fun we had. They will. They live in fear. They. 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 Most of them I see do not see a future like we did, and I. I just feel sorry for them, because for the greater part, it's like I always say. They don't change anything. The technology is all that changed. They just wait for the generation to die out. The new generation is born into not knowing. That's why one or two generations ago, one generation ago, my generation, privacy meant something. Now everybody is, wants to throw it out all over there with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And it's just like I say, they didn't force nothing on us. They're not forcing anything on us now with this lockdown, which is ridiculous. We've shown it every way, shape, and form. We're not disputing the virus. We're not going there anymore. But if you want to get a greater understanding of what's really going on and how media can pollute the mind on a mind virus by repeating and getting you to believe what is not true through constant dripping of the same information doesn't mean it's accurate. But just take a look at the amount of masks out there that don't need to be. That tells you how effective that type of deployment, how effective that type of deployment will bypass the best security systems, the best firewalls. They've used it all through history, right? Just take a look at the propagandas and all through histories and governments, how they've gotten people to kill each other all over various things, whether it was political, whether it was religious, whether it was anything. I don't give a damn because they all have one thing in common. And I remember this from a wonderful interview I did. Uh, I really enjoyed that man, Dmitry Orlov. Uh, a prominent author from uh, from Russia, he said the one thing, the only thing that's in common with all of them, is they only ma they don't matter to a corpse. And I never forgot that. So I'm quoting him. That's not that's not my my coin there. That's his, and I really think it's an excellent one. It makes a lot of sense. All right, let's move on a bit more. All right, so let's continue on here. I, I apologize, uh, but I can't, I can, well, I guess I'm donating a lot of my time. I shouldn't apologize, but I can't cram this into anything less. I'm, I'm dovetailing, I'm pigeonholing as much as possible. We're covering a lot of time here, a lot of history, all right? But uh, <clears throat> I had one of the, you know, I had actually uh, one, one of my subscribers help me out and dig up some numbers for me, okay? Here's where we're currently at right now, folks. Uh, the average household in the United States, I told you I'd be using them as the example, has about $100,000 in debt. Meanwhile, these same households are holding an average of $8,000 in savings. Now, that's not terribly bad. I, I, I want to make that clear. That's not terribly bad in, a, in, a, in an economy that's flourishing, and as long as you can cover your debts. I mean, because a lot of that 100000 just may be mortgage. Like, we can only split here so much. You know, and it also could be a gambling debt. So we don't know. Again, we can only go so deep here. I, I mean, we only have so much time. We're backtracking for y'all, okay, to get you up to speed here. Okay. The stats for under 30, uh, again, in America, are under 30 are even worse. Uh, they're averaging $2,700 in savings. So in other words, 
the average person, we're not saying anybody watching us, you could be worse, you could be better, we're saying the average per capita, okay, has 2700 in savings. So basically they are living check to check. Because when you take their mortgage, when you take their apartment rental, whatever they have, food, insurance, uh, car payment, whatever, fuel, whatever the case is, a little bit of entertainment, well not now, you're locked down, but you know, and uh, so really they, own, they are living paycheck to paycheck. So before going into this crisis, that's, that's the key question to understand, was it before the crisis, and yes it was. So what are these people going to do? I mean, think about it. This is why I state boldly we haven't seen any damage to speak of. It's opposite of how most would think that when we go back to work everything's wonderful. What people are forgetting is the astronomically ridiculous high amount of businesses and jobs that will not be there or will not be reopening. Okay, That is going to take an unemployment figure and shoot it to the moon, which will have enough petrol to actually fire the second stage, okay? Unlike the other, hey, silver's going to the moon, and it comes right down, it never hits the second stage, you know? Gold's going to the moon, it's coming down. Quick sidebar, though. In the last six years, you always said, I like metals, I never promoted buying them, but you may want to consider if you can still get physical only. I think over the next five years, you're going to appreciate what I've been saying about that, okay? Which is why, if I need to, I still spend 11 cents on a gallon of gas because I was stockpiling silver dimes and uh, now I was paying 11 cents for them and one and a quarter dimes. So it's 16 cents. Uh, yeah, if I really want to dovetail it down to today's currency, I pay six and a half cents for a gallon of gas if I want to reconvert them back into today's currency. It's just a different way of thinking. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but I'm pretty relaxed about it. And I want to continue on, too, because I have to get... I'm um, trying to work these questions on a couple of possible interviews. So, um, again, before this, people are already... The, the average is already on a, on, a, on a, you know, basically a check-to-check. -check. So, this is why I'm saying when you go back to work, and uh, is why you're going to really see it approximately... A, uh, I would say two to four weeks after that, okay, would be the frequency or something like that. And that's when a lot of people are going to try and start up and they're going to fail. Uh, you know, accounts receivable won't be able to be met by the chain reaction of other businesses that owe them won't be able to pay. Like I say, you just haven't seen that part there, okay. Um, let me see here. Okay, the only real thing, uh, too, that the the research group by uh, the mentors that we all agree on the four of us on is uh, we're not you know we're not sure what financial problems lie ahead exactly yet we're going to work it out but we do know one thing for sure is that none of us have ever experienced anything like this except possibly the very 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 elderly of us that are still around so again this is new to all of us but uh, again, uh, I also want to say <clears throat> my understanding of times like these, and uh, I'm going to, before I cut and do the final segment of this long video, but um, I'm going to go and grab a coffee and come back up. But in any event, please understand what you're seeing now. Depressions, recessions, especially depressions, they don't kill wealth. Depressions just transfer wealth to those that were ahead of the curve, trends, okay? It doesn't kill wealth, there's always plenty of opportunity. Now, it kills wealth for the vast majority of people because they don't study those type of trends. But there's always opportunity for that, you know, two, three percent to flourish in these type of opportunity driven markets. So I want to make it sure everything is, you know, a duality, a dichotomy. 
There's nothing that's always bad or nothing that's always good. So remember, for some it kills wealth, for others it transfers wealth. And uh, I'll continue after I grab a coffee, okay? Well guys, uh, I'm going to close it off real quick here. I've just got one or two more notes. I uh, had a quick coffee and I've got some other things I... I can only spend so much time on videos. Anyway, uh, I do enjoy it. Uh, please, I also want to thank everybody. If I cut quickly and forget to at the last part of the video, please, please keep the little bits and pieces coming in. But above all, if you guys aren't forwarding this on these trend subjects right now, where we are, sitting where we are right now, if you're not forwarding every one of them to everybody you know, you're not doing your part to help humanity. Uh, this is bad and we need to group together more than ever before. But anyway, uh, some quick notes here. We never advise on anything, but uh, people do ask us, what are you going to be doing? I want to just maybe make note of it. I did mention I wouldn't be surprised on a 30,000 Dow still for another shoot. Whatever term you want to use, you can use it. It's all rigged anyway. It's it's the you know it's just all false. But I never say you can't make money in a false uh, economy. In any event, <clears throat> uh, I think we're near the low, second, third week of April in the Dow. I also think it's a great time for some physical metal uh, over the next. Uh, I think over the next half decade, even it's going to start showing. It's going to start shining. There you go. And uh, in the meantime. We'll keep you informed. I'm running out of time now. i got to cut it short because I have to return a few calls. So until next time, it's all Barry. And uh, remember, get this stuff out. Uh, everybody's future depends on it. There's no game here. Okay? We'll talk to you soon. Bye.